Right, let's get political. Um, so today's video is about brands that try to sue me. So this is going to be a lesson in a different way. Um, and yeah, let's just see how this topic goes. So believe it or not, being a secondhand vintage seller does not spare you from the potential of something like brands coming to sue you. But the first thing you're probably asking is, why, why are they, why would they be doing that? So let me just give you the examples after I explain the situation. So when, when you kind of have your own website, you're essentially verifying the authenticity of the brands you sell and the one downside to having your own website with selling brands um, is that you have less behind you to confirm the legitimacy even though you might have years and years of experience understanding brands understanding exactly what's legitimate what's not unfortunately when you have your own website you lose that leverage that you get from a third party website. However, a brand did try to sue us when we was on a third party website, so this is gonna be a great video. So, <laughs> I'm just like micro living this moment back of what happened because there's a moment, so just, just for reference, just so that you get it under, under like, just so it's understood now, um, these actually, were claims that were false when it was regarding authenticity and they were, were actually not all about that. So let's start with the first one, Burberry. Um, yes, I really hope this video is gonna sit safely on the internet and if it doesn't, uh, it's been fun. Um, but no, I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a long, long time ago. So what happened with Burberry was nuts. Um, so this was back when we was working and sort of selling on ASOS Marketplace. And when we were selling on there, we was in one of our biggest sort of snowballs of the whole brand, sort of like kicking things off. Obviously, thanks to being on ASOS Marketplace platform back when, and dare I say it, back when it was like a very good website that worked. Unfortunately, I don't actually think it was the fault of Marketplace and I'm sorry, ASOS, but I think it was more of the fault of you um, not putting on secondhand brands and not putting on the sustainability thing. But that is actually content for another video. Uh, I'm not trying to have ASOS shoot me down before Burberry and all these other brands I'm about to tell you about uh, get to do the, it first. No, I'm only joking. But yeah, so back in the day, I was obviously exploring with a lot of other brands and a lot of other styles and things. And this was still, what on earth? Chelsea jeans. That is so random. Quite cool though. Um, really random. Um, so back when we was exploring with lots of different brands, right? I would I would be trying loads of different other suppliers. Uh, at the same time of keeping the loyalty with the ones I had, but I was doing like little mini micro test runs with other suppliers, and and you know testing the waters out where I could. Um, I understood the brands that I was buying before I sold them and I did like all the relevant research and things like that plus some of the suppliers that I work with have been in it and at that point they'd been in it longer than I'd been alive which was mad so I, I trusted the perspective and opinion of these people and I wasn't not someone like as a naive business person thinking oh yeah of course this is all great stuff back then suppliers were suppliers and they weren't sort of like all part-time retailers for the most part. But anyway, supplier gave me all of these um, Burberry Rain Max. And it was essentially Rain Max that were imported from the Japanese market that distributed Burberry. Now, at the time when we went on to ASOS Marketplace, they said that a representative of Burberry's team couldn't confirm that these were authentic. And it was a very extensive, basically back and forth period. Because as soon as a brand, as soon as something like that happens, the first thing you know is, I'm going to have to stop selling this brand. Or this brand is no longer going to be uh, a brand that I want to sell. Even if it comes out all good. Of which all these situations and all these outcomes, by the way, 
did end fine, of course. Um, so, we had this back and forth with Burberry. It was an absolute nightmare. And unfortunately, it was a case of like a word for a word against a word. But the, the knowledge that I took was from the supplier who'd worked with Burberry directly more than this marketing person. So it was just somebody who was representing like, I guess the HR of brands being represented on different platforms. This was quite early in like the online space of vintage as well. And these brands were obviously um, having different people sort of outsource and like look for knowledge or look for like intellectual property rights. I don't want to get too uh, political into it yet, but I have a lot of opinions on this, uh, really do. So I'll see how this video does and then I might just break that down some more. But in the, the end point of it was where that they were legitimate, but we just didn't feel like we could sell them on Marketplace anymore, so we had to take them down. It causes this massive sort of riff where you're starting to sell a brand, and you know, Burberry is one brand of many, where I'll still find, if I still find it, I'll buy it. But it creates this underlying thing where even though it's not directly the person running the brand or like Burberry themselves telling you, it's just like, oh, it's that... Really, you, you know, you don't think that we would have like done the relevant research, but I suppose the truth is that a lot of people weren't doing the relevant research. So, happened with Burberry. That one was probably the, that was the first one, and that was when I was just starting out. Like, so that was probably about eighteen months into it. Ugh. So that was um, <laughs> that was exciting. The next one happened when we was on our, on our own website, and this happened, this happened probably like three or four years ago, three or four years afterwards, sorry, and it was by a brand called Beverly Hills Polo Club. We, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to group it in with the other one who tried to do it, which was Michael Kors, and we actually randomly had... AC Milan at one point tried to sue us for something, which was all, that was all resolved very smooth and amicably, um, and it was just a misunderstanding. But what happens is, now this is, this is really what does happen. So brands like Michael Kors and Beverly Hills, they may represent the ideology of the brands where they essentially want to come back into the market and they want to reboot themselves. However, they might not have the capital behind them in order to do so. So what they can do is they can request intellectual property rights back from people such as those sellers that were selling their brands and they can claim that the items weren't authentic, even if they were, and request for the money that was made from it. So you think it's almost like an online hoovering of a brand to kind of go, yeah, we want all the money, like Michael Kors, we want all the money that like all these brands, of all these second-hand sellers have have made and we'll just call it like non-authentic so that's that's the sort of as to, to be as least political as possible that's kind of what it is and that's what happened so that happened with Michael Kors Beverly Hills Polo Club and it was definitely those moments in time where with those brands I do not put um, them on the internet anymore and even if that wasn't to happen ever again I don't want to support a brand that didn't want to support me shouting about the brand. Um, and I think there's a lot of that, how I look back at it in reflection is, these brands were almost feeling quite desperate for the money to make, like off off of small companies like us, like Jesus Christ, like super small company, um, in order to reboot their brand. I don't know, rather than just generating the capital in other ways that, weren't going to make loads of people have a jaded perspective. I don't know. It, it happened to a lot of people. With Michael Kors, it happened to a lot of people. Beverly Hills Polo Club, it happened to a lot. The Burberry situation was pretty bespoke. But I guess this is probably the first one where it's a little bit more... I'm being a bit more transparent with something that genuinely did happen. But kind of looking at that, about brands suing us or trying to sue us, and in all those outcomes, in most of those outcomes, we had to just pay a brand... A, a fee in order to like I guess give it that online anesthesia or anesthetic to kind of like numb it and like make it 
not a problem. So when we took down all the Michael Kors and things like that, they were like, we want you to destroy them. We want you to do this. Um, and they have their requests. But it just creates this background narrative where you're like, huh, okay, um, how could we even work out how much we've made from a brand like this over the course of five years? And how can we confirm the authenticity of something by it being sold already, even though we know it's real because we've respected the brand in order to research them. However, they've not respected the resellers in order to appreciate that this only helps their market. And that was probably one of the things that's, that definitely threw me off with the whole being being attempt sued um, or being close to being sued is these brands didn't really get that this was helping the narrative of their brand and they just looked at it as these are people selling individual items and making a profit. Like, can you imagine, I'm, I've used this example already, but can you imagine a brand like Nike or Stussy, these brands that are massive, going around to loads of companies, like imagine Nike going... We don't believe anything's real. We're going to do this and, and call it back. Yeah, they would generate loads of money because everybody sells Nike. But the underlying stigma of that brand, it would slowly start to like, there'd be just a reduction in like somewhere of interest, especially from a big reseller community that would stop pushing the narrative of a brand. That's how I feel anyway. So not actually salty towards these brands. It was kind of just one of those things that had to happen in order to know that this sort of thing happens. But all I'd say is, if you are trying to do your own website, uh, I'm not going to say don't sell certain brands. I'm not, I had to just take a moment then I thought, I'm not going to tell you to not sell brands. But all I'd say is, just make sure you do all of your research to know exactly where you are in your rights for the intellectual property to sell brands. Um, and then just, yeah. Keep doing your thing. Keep killing it. So yeah, hope this video has found you well. Um, it was definitely quite funny to just relive that in that moment as well. Interesting.